And now, uh, let's, let's see how we will approach the patient. They come in the clinic, yes? As I told you, we are not psychotherapists. So we will not start with giving questionnaires about how they believe, because you can use this, yes, in our job. Tabak in Sophia scale, pain catastrophic scale. But people that they use them, they usually they don't want to throw to the patients the first visit. The first visit you will do that, you will observe. But of course, the first visit is very important. We are psychotherapists when we take the history, as you said, with empathetic listening and maybe with motivational interview approaches. Open ended. Yeah? Oars, open ended, affirmations, rephrasing, summarizing. So it's important and listening. Be there for the patient, not for you. And then it's the time that we had a discussion, and now in it we want to see this human body. And of course, we start with the posture. Uh, somebody for you to be here with me, take your top off. Please. So you want to observe you want to observe the posture, guys, yes? So here with the low back pain, for instance, you can have a lateral seat. You see this, this model come a little more here. You see this model here, there is a shift, there is an adalgic pain. Because when you are in acute pain, or even in chronic sometimes, uh, you can have like an adjustment, an adalgic posture. Adalgic to reduce the pain. It can be like this. Here we have a shift, and the name of the shift is from where the shoulders are going. When the shoulders are going to the right, it's la the lateral shift to the right. And this shift we need we need to observe. And according to Robbie McKenzie, is one of the first things you want to improve slowly, slowly. Yeah, among is the, the top priority list. One, two, three things. To improve. So you want when you have a lateral shift to correct it. Yeah? And then we'll see uh, in another in the next video. So we, we observe the shift. Okay, maybe you don't have a shift, but maybe you have a postural problem. Maybe you have like anterior pelvic teeth. Maybe you have a sway. So all these things they are relevant and we need also to be part of our uh, improving improving the posture and reconditioning the human body. Yeah? You will not only you, you want to have the approach that this body should look more like the optimal position. So because this definitely creates it creates imbalances. And of course a person with lordotic person or guy for lordotic person is not a very happy person. And often people, you know, go to the gym with a personal trainer and they do stuff and personal trainers, they pay attention to the posture. And the people are getting better because there is normalization of the load in the body. But also, people, they feel better when they look better. Yes? yes. You don't feel good when you... And unfortunately, physiotherapists, we don't pay attention to this anymore before because there is some research showing that the posture is not very important. Come on, how do you know it's not very important? Is to show some temporary results that this will not create you pain. Come on, what about the person? How is the person? So you have to be very careful with some. And some people. So post is important. Lateral shift, anterior pelvic teeth. And what I like also to do is also to see movements now. Now we have active movement. So active movement, I want to see active range of motion. Yeah, come in. And I want to see how they move. Of course, I, I, I see the range of motion. But also, I need to see what they are doing there. Yeah? So, I watch the face. I'm not only sticking here how they move here, but you have to see the face. If the face is like, there's a lot of tension, the hold the breathing. Okay, good. That looks good. That looks good. And of course, I also watch how they, how they move. Yeah? Then, Extension, important range of motion, yeah? So I want to see mobility in extension. And often people, they have limited mobility. And extension is a very important range of motion, yeah? And uh, according to Mackenzie, we need to pay attention to extension. A lot of people, they are fearful of going back because they feel this stiffness. But 
one of the capacities of the spine is to be able, especially the lumbar spine, we want to see like 30 degrees of extension and the whole spine has 45 to 50 degrees of extension. And can, this can be also in standing. But unfortunately nowadays people they are weak, they have weak abdominals and when you go back you need to have your abdominals to control this. Yeah? So you see her attitudes, you see ah, they hold the breathing and then you ask people, okay, relax, breathe and do it again. Okay, be more relaxed and I'll go again. Go back. Okay, very good. So I put also the emotions in the book. I want to see the emotions, how they feel about this. And then you will see the emotions the first moment you ask them to do this. Like, can you do this? And then you will say, oh, yes, yeah. But this is also something that needs to be released. There's no reason, nothing will be broken here. Just people, they don't trust this the body. And then there are different ways to do it. Okay, maybe this is a very difficult way, but there's a more easy way. You can do some extension work, yeah? Get them to, to work, mobilize. So, uh, then, I want to, to check the rotation. And usually I ask them to put feet together, and I want to see how they rotate, and from where they rotate. Yeah? I want to see the thorax, I want to see hips, Good. And then I can ask them also to open a little bit the legs and see if they can rotate the pelvis, if they can rotate the pelvis on the hips. Because here I see the rotation of the pelvis on the hips. Because as you said before, lumbar spine is not made for a lot of rotation. And I want to see that this, the pelvis is rotating on the hips, good. And here is a small amount of movement. And here again, enough rotation. Thoracic spine has enough rotation, hips they have enough rotation, so they should move from there. Yeah? Good. Very nice. And uh, side movement again, from right to left. And I used to check from behind, you know, because you want to see the mass band, blah, 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 the symmetry. But now I want to also to observe my clients from the front, because I want to see how they feel. About how is the face expression? Do they hold the breath? Do they feel okay? Because if they do breath holding, I have to relax them. Relax. Okay? So that was active range of motion. And uh, if it's necessary, make a uh, come a little bit more like this. If it's necessary, if I didn't reproduce the symptoms, sometimes you can do overpressure, go down, and then I can apply some overpressure, head down. And then there, you can apply some overpressure, or you can apply overpressure on the extension, go back, and then here, because usually people like, they don't trust this movement, okay, and relax. I can support them a little bit with my head. So I put my head there and I support the movement, and then if it's necessary, then I will put some overpressure. Yeah, controlled over pressure. My head is also supporting, especially people that they are frail and they are weak. And the rotations, either standing or sitting, and then a combination of movements. So I will ask them to show me which movement is the worst for them. It's flexion and rotation, and then I will analyze with my knowledge of anatomy, kinesiology, and what they do. And I want to see, okay, show me the most movement, painful movement, or the most threatening movement. Whatever, and they will show you, and it's this. Ah, okay. And then you need to make a kinesiological analysis, and then you need to put components of getting people retrained part by part of the range, building confidence. What we said before here, exposure with control, the cognitive functional therapy, physio exercise, motor control. Get them confident to do. Get them to overcome the fear. Okay. What do you feel here when you go? What, what do you feel? Okay, relax now. Go back, inhale, exhale. It's important. And now, here, the last thing I do, especially a differentiation, is especially the people that they are dead, because usually the, most of the symptoms are when they go forwards, yes? So a quick differentiation is when I go down and I get a pain here in my glute, and my going down my hamstring here, 
So this can be because of, of, a, of a lumbar spine problem, a, a neural problem, yeah, sciatica. This can be because of a lumbar spine problem, problem here. Or it can be like a muscular problem. Yeah, you can have your muscles here, your, somewhere at the back, either glutes or hamstrings. So somebody that's going down and having a problem, you can quickly use this for differentiation. And the differentiation is like this. Go forward, bend forward. Okay, let me see if the detail is... Okay. Now, make an adjustment for this. Okay, good. Now, the last thing. So, we go down, and then you tell me that you have a pain either in your glutes or here. And then we know, we maintain this position here. We don't change the lumbar spine. And then we know if we do a little bit of desensitizing the nervous system. When I take up, I take tension from the nervous system. So, if it was a nerve, he should feel better with this if it was a neural tissue, the sciatic nerve, okay? This is the path of neurodynamics. If I put more flexion, it will be worse the pain here. Although I don't change much, but I already change the, te the tension in the, on the neural system. Okay, good. So, if I put switch on and off the pain, it means that this pain here is neural. If there is no effect on the pain, go down, pain here, I play with this, no difference. It, so there are uh, neural tissue is out of the possibility. So there are the, the, the other factors is lumbar spine and muscle. So for the muscle, I can ask him or him to as he is down, just to relax, transfer the body weight on the left side so there is no tension on the muscle here. Because when you step, there is more tension. So go down. And now I want you to bend this knee. Good. How do you feel now with this pain? Nothing. Okay. If it's better, it means by taking the pressure from the muscle, it was a muscular. But if there was no change, because the lumbar spine is flexed, the flex band lumbar spine will not change. So it means it's more like lumbar spine. Yeah? So that was that is a quick clinical differentiation, which is good to know for your client, which will guide you towards lumbar spine, neural problem, or muscular problem. Okay? Very good. Thank you. Now you can practice.